In this video, what I wanted to talk about was the primary start of our Python experience. And I want to talk about strings, I want to talk about variables, I want to talk about booleans, integers, and floats. And these are some of the main data points that we need to cover first before you start writing code. So for you to understand what these things are, I'm going to go over it one by one. Let's talk about strings first. So why don't we look at my screen and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So strings is a data type and for example a string is like this right so if you said uh, I'll write my name that's a string and you should also know that this is a string it's not five these are just letters that represent the number five F I V E you'll also need to understand that in Python we create strings by putting quotes around it and we bind these strings to variables, which we're gonna get to in a bit. But I need you to understand that strings are case sensitive also. So this is different from this, okay? One has an uppercase and one has a lowercase letter. When we're writing code, there are strict interpretations of what these things are. So capital F, lowercase f, or capital letters, lowercase letters, it's a big deal. You need to make sure that you, that you do it properly. So, in string declarations, normally we would write them out a single line at a time, and we would use more than one line of string uh, to have multi-line effects. So we can say, if you wanted to have a have of line one and line two, we can do that. And so I'll show you how that's how that's written. So. Let's say we do a statement that says, uh, you wanna say something, we can do this. There's three uh, quotes, and then we're gonna enter our lines here. So let's end it with three quotes. So we begin and end with three quotes, and we'll say, uh, this is line one, this is line two, this is line three. If I was to save and run this, let's take a look at what would happen. Here we go, this is line one, this is line two, this is line three. And we have extra spaces here because I, I hit enter a couple of times. So you need to understand these are multi-line. So if you wanted to practice it now, you can write your name and your last name and you could say like this is, and then insert your name, I live at, insert your address. Uh, and in Python, it's really easy to do these multi-lines that is, is, is gonna be really beneficial, especially when you start making bigger and bigger programs. So why don't we move on now to uh, strings as separate characters. So when we write this out, okay, so when we write Python out, you need to understand that every single character in your string uh, has its own place and they're assigned a number position. So let's take a look at my screen. So for example, if we, re we do this print statement and we say, hello, all right, the letter H has a position, the letter E has a position, L, L, and O. And when we do this number position, we always start by counting from the number zero. So if you look at hello, it goes zero, one, two, three, four. Because in code, on the number line, zero is a place, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore the zero. So if I was to say, uh, let's set this to a variable. Do this with me. We'll say greeting equals aloha, okay? If I wanted to just pull the L in aloha, that is index position one. So I would say print greeting bracket, that's how we call an item in a, in a list or, or its position, and we'll say one. If I save this and I run it, we're going to get the letter L, okay? So, there we go. So we get the letter L. If I want greeting, uh, if I want the O, it would be two. And I ran it, there you go, I get O. And so you can understand how we pull these separate characters out of a string. And why this is important is, let's say you wanted to, to 
strip out certain things from a string, you, you can do that. Uh, and the reason that we do that is to, to prove that every single point in the string has its own index value. It's a very important concept that you understand this. All right, let's move on. So let's try this. Let's, let's keep it simple, let's keep it quick. So we'll have a school name and I work at Roosevelt, so let's do this, all right? If I said print and I said school and I said three and I put a comma here because that's how we separate things out. What is this going to return? So then what would school zero be? Well, that's an R. So you should return S R. S R, there it is. I want you to also notice that there's a space between the S and the R, and that's where the comma is. Can you make those connections? So S space, and you put a comma here, R. Let's dig a little bit deeper in this comma. So why don't I erase this? And I'll say print, we'll say hello, comma, and then we'll say school. If you've done this properly, it should say hello, space, Roosevelt. You can see where school equals Roosevelt, right? It's a variable. We'll get to that in a bit. Hello, Roosevelt. There it is. All right? Okay. So that is a little bit about strings. Uh, let's practice one more, all right? If I say school equals Roosevelt, and then I say print school five, school four, hopefully in your mind you're already working it out, school eight, whoops, school one. All right, what is this going to return? Get the fifth index position, the fourth index position, the eighth index position, and the first index position. Now let's see what we got. Maybe you guys figured it out already. I get Vito. So we get Vito. So why don't we talk a little bit about concatenation. So when we concatenate things, we're gonna take a bunch of things and put it together. Now we have the comma in there, and that comma separates two things out. We had V, and we had space, and we had E. But what if we don't want that? What if we wanna make it one thing? Well, let's concatenate them by using the plus symbol, all right? So this is what we have now. Instead of commas, why don't we do plus? So let me run this first one more time so you understand. So we have V space E space T space O. We have Vito that way. And what we're gonna do now is replace the commas with the plus symbol. And if I save it and I run it, we're gonna get Vito just like this, all right? So we have spaces and no spaces. So on your screen now, I'm gonna put up a challenge for you to do. You can pause this video and you can do the challenge and then come back when you've done it. We're going to use a string called code Python and we're gonna rework it to spell the word phony. So why don't you try it on your own? And then why don't you come back to this video, unpause it, and then we'll look at the solution together, all right? I'll give you a moment. All right, welcome back. So, I've created a variable called word and I made it equal code Python. And then if I ran this out, it spells phony. P H O N Y has index positions in this word and we've, we've made a new word from the old word. Okay? So, and that was easy enough for you to do. Let's talk now about the new line character. So, you can create new lines in a single print command using the slash n character. So, let me give you an example of that now. Uh, if we say print Roosevelt slash n, notice that my quotes have not closed, by the way, okay? 
I only have a pair of codes, one at the beginning and one at the very end. And I say high school. This is a little different from the multi-line comment. It's just another way you can do things. If I hit run, we have this Roosevelt followed by space high school. If I didn't want that space, we could back it out right here. So if you get rid of those spaces and just Roosevelt slash N high school without any spaces, then you're eliminating a lot of extra characters that you don't need. Okay? I mean, I, I kind of prefer the multi-line way, but that's really up to you. So let's now talk a little bit about variables. We kind of started with that already, and I want to give you a little deeper explanation. So a variable is, is just a way to store, store data. We can store Boolean datas, which are true and false values. We can store integers, strings, and array objects. We'll get to that later. So I've talked about strings, and we talked about how variables can store strings. Let's talk about how variables can store true-false data. So that's a Boolean data value. It's either true or it's false. It's either on or it's off. That's like the general context of, of how code works. It's either going to be true or it's going to be false. It has to be one or the other. All right? It's not a friend that says maybe all the time. So let's practice that now. So this would be an example of a Boolean data type. We would say, are you alive as a variable? True. Capital T. Capital T and true and capital F and false. Yes. Yes, you're alive. And then if we say print alive, we're going to get a result. So let's see. Yes, we get true. Let's, let me clear this out so we have a clear screen. Uh, we, have, we have true, right? Alive equals true. You are alive. This is true. Okay? And then we can manipulate data based on whatever the answer may be for, for true and false values. All right. You should also know that variables can be changed. They're not constant. I mean, there is such a thing as constant variables, but then that defeats the purpose of being a variable. So variables can be changed all the time. For example, if your current age is uh, 25, you know, 365 days from now, I'm going to add one to that number, right? You're not going to be 25 forever. Some of you might want to. So why don't we do that now? And let's look at my screen. So to write an integer as a variable, you just do this. There you go, two numbers. Notice that these numbers are not in quotes because if they were in quotes, that would be a string. All right? We'll get to that in a bit and why this is a problem. So moving on past that, we variables have rules and they can only contain uh, uh, certain things. So they can only contain lowercase letters, they can only contain uppercase letters, they can only have digits 0 through 9, and they can only contain an underscore. And variables are case sensitive. So a lowercase letter and an uppercase letter really are two different things. And when you're writing variable names, don't give it good names. Don't give it silly names. Right, if you have a variable that stores food, just call your variable food. Don't say stuff I like. That might not make sense later on. And they must begin with a letter or an underscore uh, and not a digit. That's another big rule. While they can contain numbers, they cannot begin with a number. They have to begin with a letter or an underscore, not a digit. All right? I want to dig a little more into the Boolean data set. And I'm going to show you how to use the Boolean function. So the bool function takes any value as its argument and returns, you know, the Boolean equivalent. So what does that mean? Well, first you need to understand that any non-zero number are considered true and any zero number considered false. Okay? So let's play around with it. So if I said bool, this is a function, use the parentheses. So that's how you write a function. If I said bool1. Let's find out what bool one is. Oh, I didn't print it. Okay, let's print it first. So we'll say um, print bool one. Notice how I wrapped one thing inside of the other. I run it, it's true, one is true. 
okay so let's say bool zero and i said earlier that zeros are false there it is false but if it's 0 0.00000000001 would this be true or false i mean it's so inconsequential let's find out it's true because it's not zero this has something inside of it and that makes it true all right that's important to know so let's talk a little bit more about integers integers are whole numbers they're not fractions there's no decimal points and any sequence of digits in python represents a literal integer so let's take a look at at these all right these are literal integers notice they're not wrapped in quotes okay they're little integers but you can't have an initial zero followed by a digit between one and nine so it's a little tricky right see these are integers so this is an integer and that's an integer and that's an integer this is not an integer immediately it's broken okay so integers cannot be preceded by the zero all right it must begin with uh, one through nine and any sequence of digits specifies a positive integer so six and plus six is the same thing six plus six same thing they're both positive integers okay and to specify a negative integer we just add the negative symbol that's easy to understand all right one thing you need to also understand is that python does not like commas in between its integers so if i tried to do this if i tried to print uh over here let's let's create a variable called age and i said it equaled one comma zero 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 normally for you and i we assume that's a thousand if i said print age we're gonna get an error you get one comma and then a zero that's not one thousand that is one comma zero that's a that's a that's a tuple it's something different so to, to do that we just drop that out we just omit it we go 1000 okay there you go 1000 but if you wanted to be like uh, you know really clever about it there's other ways to do it but for now just we'll just do it like that all right um, math notation in Python is the same so you can add you can subtract this is multiply that's the asterisk key this is division and double multiply is an exponent all right let's look at that add subtract multiply divide exponent so for example if we said age equals 10 and then we have another variable called well, let's just do a print function we'll say age multiplied by 2 and we're going to get 20 right if you don't know what 10 times 2 is then you know whatever age multiplied by 2 okay you can do this if you want to. You can do um, uh, second age, and I'll say this is all these numbers. I can do age multiplied by second age, and we're going to get a super big number. You can say age raised to the exponent of that second age, and we're going to get a super big number. Okay? All right. So let's talk about floats. Uh, floats are, are integers with just the decimal points at the end integers and floats are are two different things so we can think of floats as integers uh that are are whole numbers but have floating point numbers that's why we call them floats they have decimal points and we can use an underscore to separate the digits uh for clarity as for integers so let's try this so let's say we're having the the number of thousand the last time okay so we say age equals a thousand well if i printed age and let's look at it one more time and I hit run, we get one zero zero zero. All right. There it is. One zero zero zero. Okay. And I can do this. Comma. Let's see what happens. Still a thousand. The only reason you would put the underscore in there is to just if you're working with big numbers and you got a lot of code, you say, well, 
you know, how do I read out a million? I might not read all the zeros properly. All right. Let's explain what a float is. So if I do dot zero zero, and I run it again, you now get one thousand point zero. Yes, this is a floating point number. You should also understand that when you mix integers and floats, Python automatically promotes the integer value to float values. So if I did this, let's do something real simple. If I said print 10 plus 4.0, we're going to get 14.0. There it is. We get 14.0. Okay. That's all it is. Versus 10 plus 4. Two integers we just get 14 so when you're working with Python uh, decimal places and using floats I like floats better because it's one more accurate and two if you're working like let's say the banking sector or you're trying to sell someone something using Python uh, you know you're, you want to charge them for that extra decimal fraction of a dollar at the end you don't want to just lose that uh, especially if you're trying to compound interest or you're trying to build a calculator you need those decimal places That's, those are very important to have we can also convert an integer to a floating number by using the float function so in this case we'll say age equals uh, 20 20 all right and if I printed this out you know it's just gonna show 20 but if you want to convert it to a float you could do this you could just say float and then wrap that in a parenthesis like that or if you wanted to uh, new age equals float age because I'm just passing the value from the age variable into this new age variable right this goes to here convert into a float and then I'll just uh, print new age I argue that this is a longer way but hey man if it works it works 20.0 there you go you can convert that to a floating uh, floating data point all right now let's talk about order of operations in Python so in Python and other coding language we, we follow this order of operations and we use parentheses to wrap what we want to be done first so just like when you took math right you had, you had grouping symbols you had exponents same thing so let's go look at my screen now and we'll show you the difference so for instance, if I said, uh, let's call this variable A, and if I said 5 plus 10 multiplied by 30, and I have a B variable, and we say, I'm going to wrap 5 plus 10, and then I'm going to multiply this by 30, all right? You smart people out there are already going to know what's going to happen. I'm going to print A, and I'm going to print B. Let's find out. One answer gives us 305, and the other answer gives us 450. These are two different numbers. And if you're playing with people's data, you need to make sure what needs to get grouped and, and, and how it's supposed to be grouped. Okay? So the parentheses tell Python to do the operation in the parentheses first, and then to do the operation outside the parentheses next, just like math. And parentheses can be nested, which means that there can be parentheses inside parentheses. That's fine, too. Let's do a quick practice build together. We're going to figure out how many hours have passed since the year of your birth. Now, it doesn't matter about months and days, and, and let's not count leap years. Let's keep it really simple. We're just going to do a rough calculation to figure out how many hours have passed since the year of your birth. If you want, you can pause this video and go ahead and practice this and try it. And in a little bit, we'll come back and we'll go over the answer together. Welcome back. Okay, let's go over the solution to the challenge I gave earlier. So we're trying to find the total amount of uh, hours you've been alive. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a variable called age, and I'll just say 100. I also want to create a variable called hours, and there's 24 of them. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to make a group, and I'm going to say age multiplied by hours. And I'm going to take that group and I'm going to multiply it by 365. And I am 876,000 hours old, roughly. So this is how I solve that problem. 
I thought it was easy enough to do. I, hopefully for you, it was easy enough for you to do. You've learned a lot today. You've learned about integers and variables and floats and booleans and, and, and a lot. So hopefully you've understood what was happening in this video. If not, go back, rewind it, watch it again. If you want another practice to do, then try to calculate the area of a room, multiplying length times width, and then go ahead and try to convert that into square feet to square meters. So we can, we can really do a lot with Python. And hopefully you'll understand how to write more code and keep watching the videos. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more content coming up. And then when you're done with Python, you know, we can learn other things like JavaScript as well. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Bye.